Good morning, everybody. I am glad to be able to be in your living room or wherever you are. And uh, I'm really blessed to have this opportunity. And uh, I just wonder what you're doing right now as you're watching this. Am I having breakfast with you? <laughs> or are you driving in your car somewhere? Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's a blessing uh, to be able to sit here before you and to open another portion of God's Word. Um, uh, I, I do realize that I'm wearing the same shirt as I did last night um, on our Wednesday evening service. And the reason is, is because I actually filmed this last night uh, so that you could watch it today. And uh, the, uh, I mentioned on the video last night, please pray for Brother Jack. Uh, he hasn't been feeling well. Um, it's, uh, uh, I don't want you to, to panic, you know, and think he has the coronavirus or anything like that. Um, he, uh, uh, he just hasn't been feeling well. And so he was supposed to do the devotional today and tomorrow, uh, but he wasn't able to do that. And so, um, so you're stuck with me again. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned last night on our video, uh, very excited about uh, uh, this verse that I'm going to share with you, and uh, we're going to be looking at it today and tomorrow. And uh, then uh, next week, uh, going to be looking at the names of God, and so I'm excited about that. I look forward to that, and uh, so please continue to share this with others and uh, let them know that we're doing this. And uh, I pray that uh, we're encouraging you. And I want to encourage as many people as possible. And I, I know that uh, um, the season's hard, and I know it's tough, uh, but uh, God is still good. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today, focusing on the Lord. And so what I want to talk about today is one of my all-time favorite verses. And I have many verses in the Bible that are very precious to me. Uh, the entire Bible is great. Uh, you know, God said it, and so it's uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. And uh, but uh, this one verse that, that I'm going to be sharing with you is one that I turn to a lot when uh, I'm having a hard time. Uh, it's one that I look at when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, and uh, let's just face it, you know, sometimes things are tough. And uh, have you ever had one of those days where um, you just say, what, uh, what in the world is going on? Uh, what, um, you know, what's the purpose of all this? And, uh, you know, you, you might even uh, get to the point where you say, what is, what is the purpose of my life? Um, I feel like I'm in a rut or I feel like I'm, you know, spinning my wheels and, uh, and nothing really is getting accomplished. Um, and uh, I think that's how a lot of people feel right now, uh, being in their houses or, um, you know, uh, many others could just going straight to work and then straight home and, or straight to the grocery store and then straight back home. And, uh, and so I want to share this verse with you. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And uh, verse number 11, again, one of my all-time favorite verses. It's encouraging to me. It uplifts me. Uh, and ultimately, it, it helps me to remember what everything is about and who everything is about. Uh, because the reality is, my life isn't about Nick Lewis. Uh, my life is about the King. And so I want to look at this verse, Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 11. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful verse of scripture. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And so as we look at this scripture today, I, I want to share just a little bit about the context of this scripture. 
Why is this scripture here in this particular place? Uh, what else is going on? And so uh, I'm not going to go, you know, through uh, the first three chapters of the book of Revelation right now. Uh, but I do want to kind of let you know what's going on very quickly. So first of all, Revelation chapter 1, uh, we find Jesus appearing to John the Apostle. And there's a beautiful, but at the same time scary uh, description of Jesus there. <clears throat> Excuse me. We often think that, uh, you know, Jesus... When he came the first time, he came as, uh, you know, this uh, baby in a manger and uh, had, uh, you know, this, this meekness about him. We talked about that uh, when going through the, the fruit of the Spirit. Um, but uh, what you read in Revelation chapter 1 is that his eyes are as flaming fire. And so there's this beautiful description of Jesus. Each, each one of those things, each one of those parts of the description of him are very significant into... Uh, who he is, and into the character uh, of God. And so uh, that, that's a beautiful thing. In chapter 2 and chapter 3 of Revelation, uh, we see that there are seven letters that are written to seven different churches uh, throughout Asia Minor. And known as the seven churches of Asia. And uh, we have been going through these in Sunday school. Uh, and uh, if you have not seen the videos uh, that Brother Roger Stewart uh, and Bogard Press is putting out, um, then uh, I would encourage you to watch those. You can find those. We've been posting those on our, uh, our church Facebook page on Sunday mornings, um, and uh, appreciate them doing that while uh, we're, we're having this shelter-in-place thing all over the nation and, and all over the world, actually. Um, and so very thankful that they're doing that. I would encourage you to watch those, to listen to those. Um, and uh, these letters in chapter 2 and chapter 3, they were written to specific churches in very specific places. And you'll find in each one of those letters that there's things that are very specific to them, to their culture, uh, to things that they had there. Um, but what's awesome about the word of God is that it's living. And so while some of the things that are written there are specific to those specific people in that specific area, uh, it still very much applies to us today. And the messages still apply to us today. Again, the, the word of God is quick. That means it's living and it's powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. And so understand that uh, this book that we have in front of us isn't just a, uh, it's not just some pieces of paper with words on it, uh, but it is the living word of God. And so it affects us today. And there's some beautiful things there in chapter two and chapter three. Uh, now, at the beginning of chapter four, here in the book of Revelation, uh, we find this statement in verse number one. It says, after this, and then, and then he continues on. Uh, so think about that. After this, dot, 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 right? Um, after what? And so the Greek phrase there uh, that, that's translated after this, it's metatauta, metatauta. Um, and it, it, and it, it means after this or, or literally tauta is in the neuter. And so it speaks of things. And so after these things. Um, and so what we find is that there's seven churches uh, that receive these letters, and then after that, after these things, we see uh, this vision of heaven and, and people in heaven, and, uh, and so that's what we find in chapter number four. Uh, we read in verse number two, it says, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one that sat on the throne. Now that's the one I'm interested in. Uh, I'm interested in that one that sits on the throne in heaven. Um, he should be sitting on the throne in your heart and in my heart. Uh, but uh, ultimately, one day we're going to see him uh, sitting on the throne in heaven. Uh, and uh, I look forward to that. And I pray that you look forward to that day as well. Uh, but 
When you're done watching this, I would encourage you to go and to read the rest of this chapter. Uh, for the sake of time, uh, I'm not going to read the rest of this chapter, but it's a beautiful, beautiful description and a beautiful scene that, uh, that transpires here in heaven. But uh, I want to skip down to verses 10 and 11. And so uh, let's look at verse number 10. The Bible says, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne. And so uh, I want you to see that here, is that these 24 elders, uh, they fall down before the Lord and worship him as they cast down their crowns before him. Notice the part in verse 10 that says they are worshiping the one that liveth forever. The one that liveth forever. Uh, we're getting ready to celebrate Resurrection Sunday, this Sunday. Uh, and this is speaking of the one that we find in the first chapter of, of Revelation and verse 18. Remember that description of Jesus. And, and Jesus says in chapter 1, verse 18, that he is the one that was dead and is now alive and lives forevermore. He says that he ever liveth. He, uh, he is going to continue to live forever. Uh, and so that is the one that this is speaking of here, the one that liveth forever and ever. The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for us. Um, the book of Hebrews also says that he died once uh, and he only died once. Uh, he came back to life uh, three days later and he will never die again. Uh, he lives forever. He ever liveth. So having said this, let's look at verse 11. And I want to point out a couple things here. Uh, it starts out and it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one who is worthy. Notice, it doesn't say, Nick Lewis, thou art worthy, Nick Lewis. No, it doesn't say that. I am not the one who is worthy to receive these things. No one should ever worship you or worship me. Only the Lord is worthy to be worshipped. I'm reminded of what Jesus told the devil during his temptations. In Matthew 4 and verse 10, he then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. I need to tell you that anyone who does not point you to Jesus and to try to get you to worship Jesus is an operative of the devil. So these people that want you to worship them They're from the enemy. Only worship the one true God because he is the only one that is worthy of it. There's only one that's worthy. Almighty God. Jesus Christ is the one that's worthy. Notice the next part of this verse. It says to receive glory and honor and and power. And so what is he worthy of? He's worthy to receive glory, first of all. Now, the simplest way that I can explain what glory is, or what that word means, is that it means to put the spotlight on. Think about that. To put the spotlight on. So if you were to turn off all the lights in a room, it is completely dark. Uh, but then you were to turn on a spotlight. Wherever that spotlight is turned on uh, is where your eyes are going to naturally go. Uh, you're going to focus where that light is directed. And so you've put the spotlight on that object or that thing. Um, and so that's what this word glory is all about. See, our great God is the only one worthy to have the spotlight on him. 
It's all about him. We need to stop putting the spotlight on ourselves. We need to stop right now. Listen, we need to stop putting the spotlight on a virus. We need to stop putting the spotlight on the news. And we need to stop putting the spotlight on politics. Listen, none of that's worthy. I want you to hear me. I'm not saying that you don't need to be informed. I'm not saying that you don't need to, uh, you know, know what's going on in the world. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is what's happening is that people are just overrun with all of these things. All of their focus and all of their attention is on these things. Can I just share with you as Christians... These little devotionals are 15. I think there was one that was 20 minutes. This one here might be might be a little long today. I, I haven't looked at I can't see how long this is going. But um, if, 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 if all you do is watch a 15-minute devotional, um, or maybe you don't even watch it all the time, I don't know. But then you spend hours of your day on Facebook looking at all of the the different lies and garbage and stuff that's on there or, or just turning the news on and that's all you're focused on right now. What is the spotlight on? We need to put it on the Lord. He is worthy to receive glory. Not only is he worthy to receive glory, but he is also worthy to receive honor. Notice, uh, this word means a valuing by which the price is fixed. It also means the honor which one has because of their rank or state of office. So God is worthy of honor because he is of the highest rank. He's at the top. There is no price that could be put on how valuable he is because without him, none of us would be here. And if he ceased to be, then everything else would cease to be as well. He not only created us, but he holds all things together by his power and might. And thirdly, he is worthy to receive power. The word power is the word dunamis, where we get our word dynamite. It's explosive. It's also like a dynamo, where uh, you think about a, a snowball that as it rolls down the hill, it gets bigger and the force becomes more powerful. What's interesting is that in Acts 1 and verse 8 that Jesus promised that he was going to give this power, this dunamis power, in order that we might go and be witnesses and that we might go and share the gospel with others. But here we find that he is worthy to receive power. And this may seem a little bit confusing to us, but in all reality, we use this power that he has given to us to give it back to him. We just read in chapter 10 something similar to that. It says, The four and twenty elders, they fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. Notice this. And they cast their crowns before the throne. Well, where did they get those crowns? They got those crowns from him. So you see this picture here that they get these crowns from the Lord. And then they turn around and they lay these crowns at his feet. Uh, can I tell you that everything that we have been given from God, uh, we have the opportunity to turn around and to lay it back at his feet. So I'm going to look at the rest of this passage tomorrow. And uh, we'll stop right here for right now. Uh, again, I would encourage you to read through this chapter uh, before uh, you watch the video tomorrow. And uh, But I, I want to end with this song and if you know this song would you sing it with me at home thou art worthy thou art worthy thou art worthy oh to receive glory Glory and honor, glory and honor and power, for thou hast created, hast
dust, all things created, thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are created. For Thou art worthy, O Lord. Our righteous God and Heavenly Father, we thank You again for the opportunity to get into Your Word. God, You are worthy. Father, help us not to forget that. And help us to continually remember that we're not the ones that are worthy it's not all about us God help us to take the spotlight off of ourselves and to put it upon you God you are the one that is of the highest rank and the most value you are the priceless one God you also are the one that has all power God as you Give us your power and you enable us, Lord, help us to return that back unto you. Help us to use it for your honor, for your glory, that you might be exalted. We love you and praise you, Lord. Thank you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching this. Uh, make sure to check out our future videos. You can do that by subscribing to this channel and also if you click on the little bell that you see next to the subscribe button, it will send you notifications every time we post a new video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope to see you soon. Love you guys and God bless.